On this week's show, the Georgia Southern baseball team wraps up their home schedule at J.I. Clemens, hosting Georgia State this weekend. We'll preview that and talk to head coach Rodney Hennon about how things have been going for the Eagles. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Inside the Eagles Nest. I'm Josh Aubrey being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we're all down to one sport left, and that's the Georgia Southern baseball team. The softball team bowed out last week in the uh, Sun Belt Tournament. Doesn't look like as of the time we're shooting this, Stephen Fisk has a chance of moving on as an individual in the golf. But let's begin with the baseball team and that Rodney Hennon's team seems to have kind of turned things around. They've been winning uh, two out of three series the last couple weeks, and now they had a rain out midweek and get ready to wrap things up at home against Georgia State. Well, you look at how the season's going and the record, and this is a team that's been around the 500 mark throughout the entire season, and it's easy to get a little bit down on uh, Georgia Southern after two consecutive appearances in the conference tournament championship game, but you've got to look at the big picture of what this program tends to do. And since Rodney Hennon's been here, since the year 2000, so this is 19th season. He's had all of one losing year. He's only had one year where he didn't make it to 30 wins. This is a very consistent team, even when it's not at its best, as it was maybe last year where they were really set up to make a run. This year, they were able to take their lumps. They rode out some injuries, and they do what they do best. They build it up. They find a way to win, and this is a team that in many years has hit its stride at exactly the right time. You look at all those conference championships and regional appearances, to the best of my recollection, I don't think a single one of those tournament championships have come with Georgia Southern as the one seed in that tournament. So while the Eagles might not always be the best throughout the season, they're usually one of the teams playing at their best come tournament time. And we know when tournament time begins, pitching becomes a premium. You need to have a fairly deep uh pitching staff both from the relievers and some guys that can fill in and spot start for you because if you got to fight your way through the losers losers bracket you never know how many uh, innings you're going to have to use from different players right now it looks like they've got two solid starters and then that third starter it's kind of been up and down and they've gotten some moments in midweek series from some guys and, and every now and then they get that third day starter but the good thing is you go in with at least two guys that you feel confident about. Right, and nothing is a given in baseball, especially with pitching, but when you've got Brian Eichhorn and uh, uh, Seth Schumann that you can run out there one-two, you feel pretty confident that you'll be in position to win both of those games, but that's really the trick. Two games in the tournament, nowhere near enough. That's where you need everybody else to step up, and that's where I think Georgia Southern's hoping that the last few weeks – where you've seen better performances from Braxton Johns, who's really come on as a spot starter, a dependable reliever. You've got David Johnson, who's been up and down, but has had some good showings as of late. It was important to get Jacob Parker back, who went down very early in the season. He's come back and looked good. He might be in a bit of a limited role, but any innings you can get, if you remember tournaments past, you've got guys pitching in situations that they just aren't used to pitching in, but that's what it takes with the possibility of playing six games in five days. So you get what you think you can get. Hopefully you get A efforts from your two horses there going uh, in the first couple of games, but you have to remember that if you get those efforts, you probably aren't going to be able to use them, but for a couple more innings, maybe not at all the rest of the way. So it's a team effort. The bats have to cooperate. The rest of the pitching staff has to be there. You just hope that you get that start that you're hoping for from those first two guys. All right. Well, this week it's Georgia State. It's at home with only two seniors, and neither one of them uh, have had that much of an impact. I mean, they, they've been injured and, and had you know, kind of not the careers that they had hoped, but they're guys that have stuck things out. We had a chance to talk with head coach Rodney Hennon about how the season's gone as they get ready for their final home series with Georgia State this weekend. Well, our, our kids are playing hard, and, and I think right now we're, we're playing really well together as, as a unit. Um, you know, certainly having some guys heal up and, and come back has, has helped, but I think also at the same time you, you've seen some growth uh, with a lot of players on this team as, as they've had a chance to, to go through a season and, and, and gain some experience in, in some big situation. I, I think you, you've seen some maturity with a lot of these guys. And a lot of times when you have injuries and people have to fill those spots, 
it can help build a lot of depth as well. No, no doubt. Uh, you know, we, we went through uh, quite a bit of adversity early on this year, and I, I think any time you, you go through some tough times, uh, when you're able to come out on the other end, you're going to come out stronger, and, and I think uh, this team was hit with it early on. How do you feel about your pitching staff right now? Tell us a little bit about what their strengths are. Well, you know, feel good about uh, you know our starting pitching. You know that that uh, begins with with Brian Eichhorn. He's he's done a very good job for us uh, going out and and beginning the weekends on Friday night. Uh, you know he's been pretty consistent going going deep in ball games. You know Seth Schumann has has done a good job in in that Saturday role. Uh, you know the Sunday. Uh, spot is is something we're we're still kind of searching for somebody to to step up and give us some consistency there. We've kind of left that open, you know, each weekend. And you know, the guys in the bullpen that that have done a good job for us, uh, you know, Chase Cohen and and Cole Whitney, Braxton Johns has done some good things. And and again, some of those other guys, I, I think you've seen mature as, as the season has progressed. Uh, you know, some young guys like David Johnson and, and Hayden Harris have continued to improve. As far, as far as the position players go and, and how your hitting is gone, uh, I know you guys struggle a little bit out of the gates, but it seems like you're starting to hit the ball. With. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think we, we're, we're playing with a lot more confidence right now. And, and again, I think a lot of that has come with uh, with some experience and, and, and kind of being battle tested. And, you know, guys have had to fight through some struggles uh, at, at times this year. But right now, you know, again, these guys are, are playing really well together as a team, and, and it seems as if it's been a different guy from day to day stepping up. It, it hadn't been just one or two guys, so I think that's encouraging, especially this time of the year. Four games left in the regular season. you got Charleston Southern and then a three-game series at home against Georgia State. Your thoughts on these last four games? Well, we, we need to finish strong, no, no doubt about it. You want to go into the tournament with, with – momentum and and the thing that we keep preaching to to our guys this time of the year is is you have to literally play one pitch at a time you know all your focus all your energy into every pitch and and not take anything for granted everyone has something to play for uh this time of the year and uh you know i'm, I'm proud of the way this team has has battled back and 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 positioned itself you know going into this last weekend and and we need to finish strong at home here is there a seed that you're like, this is what we really want, or, or does it just matter how you play going in? Well, it's all about how you play and, and, and execution. I, you know, I try not to get caught up in, in that part of it. I mean, obviously, you want to go in and, and get the highest seed that you can and, and have the strongest finish that you can in the regular season. But regardless of how that shakes out, it's all about uh, getting that first game, you know, when you get to the tournament and, and playing it one pitch at a time, one game at a time. So that's what we'll need to do. Last uh, home games for your seniors. Yeah, you know, uh, two seniors. Uh, it's a much smaller senior class. You know, we went from 12 a year ago to, to two this year. You know, Chandler Corley, you know, his first year in our program uh, after after playing over at, at Armstrong. And, and Chandler has been a really good addition uh, to this team, especially with the youth on this team that we have positionally to have an older guy uh, out there in the mix. And, and Chandler has fit in really well with, with the other guys and, you know, learned a new position this year. You know, he was a short start, shortstop at Armstrong. We threw him out to center field. He, he's adapted well out there and, and been a big part of of our team this year and then you know Matt Geiger who uh, you know has been a, a part of the program uh, battled through you talk about adversity you know Matt's been one of those guys pitched a, a good bit early on as, as a freshman and you know battled through some injuries two surgeries knee surgery and then came back from that and and then you know injured his elbow and and had to go through Tommy John surgery and probably is as well respected as as any player we've had here in a long time by by his teammates for for all that he's done to hang in there and and fight back and you know Matt's been a great example within our program his his whole career here so really proud of both those guys so once again three game series with Georgia State coming up this weekend and then it's the Sun Belt tournament next week all right Mike well before we go uh, let's put a bow on the softball and the golf season. Well, for golf, uh, technically the golf season's still going. As you mentioned, Stephen Fisk qualified as an individual for the NCAA regionals down in Orlando, where after a solid first round, he had to dodge a, a lot of high numbers, uh, some hail, I believe, in the second round. He really tumbled down the leaderboard there. It's a big uphill climb. 
if he wants to make a run, not looking like it's in the cards. So that would end the men's golf season for Georgia Southern. On the softball side of things, we remember the early months of the season. This is a team that came from out of nowhere. It was on fire. A Georgia Southern team that had really struggled the last couple of years. It really struggled as much as any Georgia Southern team had with the bump up to the Sun Belt, with the Sun Belt being a top three or four conference in the nation as far as softball teams go. But with a new coaching change, some new faces, some young faces, they really put it together, weren't able to quite make it last the entire season. But I would be willing to wager a little money that uh, next season they don't start down in the bottom two or three when those projections come out uh, late in the winter. Well, you might be able to wager. You can, (laughs) maybe. We'll have to see if Georgia passes it. But, yes, that opportunity is coming. So, all right. Well, that'll wrap things up for this week. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.